Hey everybody, welcome to Car Stylist. Tip and technique number three. Modeling in ZBrush has its limits. While it's really good to bang out conceptual models and investigate new forms, really dialing in some of the details, the cut lines and graphics may prove to be very difficult. At some point, in order to get these clean highlights and cut lines and graphics, you'll probably have to transition into software such as Maya or Moto or Topogun to do resurfacing or retopology. I like using Maya. It's got a really great set of retopology tools now. And once you've retopologized your model, you can transition to, into sub Ds and then to NURBS. When in NURBS, you can export that model out to say Alias or Rhino and really throw in some refined lines and cut lines. Today, what I want to do is show you that process, at least the Maya process, of taking this particular model I have here, which you may have seen this on my Car Stylist site, carstylist.com, or you may have seen it on the Facebook site, an image that I put up. But I wanna take this model and take it a bit further. I will retopologize it in Maya and then I will take it into Alias and begin to, to throw in some cut lines, some really refined cut lines and graphics. But first, let's go ahead and retopologize it. Gozi will allow me to lop this over to Maya and uh, begin retopologizing. Go up to the Gozi button here if you have it installed. And you can find out how to install that by doing a quick search. But I click on my Go Z button here and it's just gonna take this particular sub to and lob it on over to Maya. So here it is in Maya and it's the same size as what it was in ZBrush. So I like to resize the model in Maya first and in order to do that, we need to change the grid settings and the unit setting. I already know what size I'd like it to be. I'm going to use the Bach Mono as a reference. And its size is about, uh, at least in length, 3,952 millimeters. So let's go ahead and resize this model, which is minuscule, to about that size. First, you need to go ahead to the windows. Windows uh, Preferences, Setting Preferences, Preferences. Go to your settings and make sure that your units is on millimeters. So I'm gonna change this to millimeters. So now the next thing to do is to go to your display here, go to your grid and go to the dialog box to the right here. This represents 4,500 millimeters, okay? And we have now every 100 millimeters a grid line and for our subdivisions we have five millimeters for the subdivision lines in order to really see the subdivision lines you need to change one the color of either the subdivision line or the main grid lines and i'm just going to go ahead and here and just maybe crank the the grid line or the subdivision line to maybe something darker and apply now you'll see the grid line is the lighter line. This is the 100 millimeter line, the typical sort of grid used in automotive design. I'm gonna apply that, I'm gonna close it. Next, create a box that represents the size of the final model. Uh, in this case, is going to be um, the size of the Bach model, as I mentioned before. And the Bach model, first, let's go up to create, and polygon primitives, and I'll say cube. What I want to do is dial in the number. And in this case, it's going to be, and I've got the numbers here because I've done this before, done this already, but the width is going to be uh, 1800 and the height is 100, uh, one, 1110, depth 3952. Go ahead and apply that and that box will appear with that particular size. I'm going to change this to wire so that I can uh, see through it and see the model underneath. 
let's uh, throw this box now on this bounding box or cube that represents our correct size. We're going to throw this on a separate layer here. I'm going to make this in this case, turn that off. We're just going to use a bounding box for that. And I'll go over, right click on the layer and go to select set selected layer to bounding box and that'll turn off that shader for that box. Now I can see through it and I can see that my uh, vehicle is shaded and I'll pick that this particular model, my particular model here, the wheels also. And we'll now scale using the bounding box as reference. We'll now scale the car up to size. Just use this center control point here and just scale it up to size. Checking in, and probably it's good to probably do this in three views. I'm going to throw it in three views so we can see it. And I will scale this vehicle until it meets the edges of the bounding box. Now you're not going to be able to get it in all views because it's not the exact same size as the Bach model, but I just needed that that size for reference to, to know that it's a realistic a realistic size for this type of vehicle. So there you have it. We have the, the this particular vehicle at the correct size. Now I can just hide the bounding box or hide that, that particular reference box. I'm going to pick this again and set it to the correct height or at least put it to the ground plane. So let's move on to the actual retopology. That is fairly simple also. In order to do that, we need to make this model live. That is, uh, the retopology that we do or the geometry that we do after making it live will cause the geometry to stick to the surface as reference. So let me illustrate. I'll pick this surface and we're going to go up here to where you see no live surface and I'll click this horseshoe and now all of the geometry that I produce hereafter will stick to that model. Once you made the surface live, there are numerous ways using QuadDraw in the modeling toolkit over here of creating polygons on top of the surface or organized polygons on top of the reference surface. One way is to lay out vertices on the surface like this and then using shift key, click inside of click within the area of those four vertices, and then you'll create this polygon as you see here. You can then subdivide that polygon by pressing on the control key and clicking wherever you need to click in order to create or subdivide that particular polygon, as you can see. As you're creating that polygon, the, the polygons, they're automatically laying on the surface of the reference model, as you can see here. Another way of creating uh, a polygon is to drag out from the polygon that is already existing there or the polygon that you've just created. You do this in at least Maya 2015 by pressing down your tab key and using your left mouse button drag along that edge out and then you'll create another polygon based on that. You can just now simply use your left mouse button and drag the vertice or the edge where you need that vertice edge to be, as you can see here. With that same type of technique, you can also press the tab key and pull out from an edge of a polygon and bring it over, thus creating yet another polygon. Uh, if you use the tab key and also the middle mouse button, as you can see, it's bringing up the polygon along that whole edge loop. So in this way, you can quickly resurface the model in an organized way quite quickly. Keep in mind though that when you're doing this, you want to follow the flow of your character lines and your design lines of the model. If you don't, it's going to be hard to capture some of the character lines and refine those lines further down the line. 
this particular uh, character line here, for example, in order for me to achieve a hard line, a really good hard line around that edge, it might be necessary to make sure the flow of my polygons follow that edge. This particular strip is following the flow. That edge is following the flow of this particular character line. So in like manner, as you proceed across the model, you want to make sure that you try as much as possible to follow the character lines of the model. So it's so, okay. Uh, I fast forwarded a bit and the model is completely retopologized, resurfaced. You can see that the um, topology is following the edges, the character lines of the model, you know, along the fender, the quarter, the, um, the air ducts. All of the polys make sense and they're following all of the pertinent character lines. So this is what I'm talking about. And now, so the model will be able to hold the structure, hold the various character lines, and I can now refine further. Uh, let me show you what this looks like with Quadra off and then smoothed. So we'll just go ahead and turn off the underlying poly. There's the, um, the surface right there. Now I'll go ahead and smooth it. And now you can see the clean surface that I've produced using uh, retopology. Now there's some things that I need to work on in the front end and there's other things, but it's a far better structure in which to work out the details and still keep that smooth highlight. Uh, the reflections, the highlights have a good form, a good format. They're following the surface pretty well. Even further, you can go ahead and make this into a NURB surface. Go over to Modify, Convert. Uh, you have to change it to Sub-D, Sub-D to Polygons, or um, Polygons to Sub-Ds, that is. And then after you've changed it to Sub-Ds there, you change the Sub-Ds to the same thing, Convert, and you have Sub-Ds to NURBs down there. It's a two-step process, but it's quite quick. So that's my NURB surface or sub surface produced with the polygons. So there's a lot of isoparms, yeah, I know, but you can still drop clean lines on the surface and who cares how many isoparms it has if it looks good. So you can take it further in Alias. And let me show you that in Alias. If I were to open up Alias, I'm going to save this out. And by the way, in order to save this out, uh, you go to export, export selection, and then you want to have the file format on SPF DCE. I'm not sure what exactly that stands for. Whatever it is, it's a wire file. So you just go ahead and export that selection. I'm going to save it on my desktop here. And let's just go ahead and open up the file. And there you go. If I now just do a fast a fast uh, shade, turn off the shade, there's that surface, an exact copy of its nerves or of its polygon smooth mesh counterpart. So this is how you go from a ZBrush sculpt to a sub D to a nerves surface on which you can drop lines and do further detail.